YouTube, how's everyone doing? Jags to Riches, James Peters, thank you all so much for your time. And the Boston Celtics Summer League is now officially a wrap. Apologies yesterday, I dropped that um, the video. Half of it was about LeBron James. That was the main topic, but I did also address Summer League after the game against Memphis. I was unaware that there was actually a fifth game. And um, so, again, kind of got a little ahead of myself. But today, just simply want to look at yesterday's game against Brooklyn. And, you know, I kind of went into a lot of detail as the Summer League as a whole yesterday. So I'll just touch on, you know, the final stats and takeaways. And more importantly, what this video is going to be based around is one of the major signings the Boston Celtics actually were able to accomplish on the back end of this summer league and an incredible performance. And one now they have both of the two-way contracts secured, and it is by two guys I am extremely excited about. So I just kind of want to talk about some of my key takeaways and you know key players' performances throughout this summer league. But first, obviously, yesterday I dropped the video about LeBron James, his comments, you know, it's no secret what he said. It's everywhere right now. To anyone that I offended, I do want to apologize. That video was not meant to actually come at you all anyway. Or when you're making a video about somebody as transcendent as, as who LeBron is to the world, you know, one of the greats, you know, one of the, I, of course, it's going to rub some people the wrong way. I completely understand that. But I felt that, and, and furthermore, I am no fool. I know that he's not speaking on all Celtics fans. My whole point is, is when you are saying words of that magnitude, the power and the weight of your words in that position where millions of people, including kids, will hear that, it is better to be specific than to overgeneralize. Because now you honestly think everyone just because you can figure it out doesn't mean everyone can so there's certain people out there that will he read or hear that and then asso just associate every single Celtics fans with that I think Artorius in the um comment section has been saying it the best it's it's like it doesn't matter for some people it doesn't get that deep some people will just hear well you're a Celtics fan okay you're this now so I just think that that is those to say that it is extremely extremely you know i just think that you got to be careful at times especially in today society with that type of you know statement when you are who you are you know being a lebron especially because that does not just pertain or is um you know unique to the city of boston it happens everywhere have we not seen the malice in the palace the Utah Jazz fan telling Russ to get on his knees. Or what about the Golden State fan that called LeBron like a bitch ass, whatever, and got kicked out? How many fans has LeBron gotten kicked out around the NBA? I wonder what they were saying to him. And that's my whole thing. People's kickback and rebuttal is kind of like, well, you act like he's lying. You know, it is a good amount. It's a history in the 50s and 60s and 90%. It's, guys, obviously, I know that. But I can promise you. That for every LeBron or KD or Kyrie who's saying stories about shit in Boston, there are other players who might not be as public that have stories, horror stories from different, you know, cities or whatnot. So again, I think it's a little silly just to act like this does not happen everywhere to the people that are saying that he's not wrong. And it's, you know, there's a good amount of examples and, you know, 90% and this and that. So what about the 10% of the people that aren't? Let's say in that hypothetical, there's 90% of the people in Boston are that way. So the other 10%, we're just going to you know, screw them. We're just going to put them in there. My point is, even if it's 1%, we can't actually categorize an entire group of people based off of the actions of few, of, uh, an asshole throwing a water bottle at Kyrie or, you know, uh, just the, the few bad examples of the intoxicated drunk people doing belligerent things at a game. And now all of a sudden, it's just that that is my whole point on it. Right. I was speaking from a position of emotion yesterday and um, I kind of went down that route. So keep that in mind. I am a diehard Celtics fan and it hit me in a certain way, kind of close to home. So, you know, that's kind of where my perspective came from and maybe why I went a little hard at LeBron. So again, I completely understand and welcome any kickback and any people being upset. Again, I hope I didn't offend anyone too bad. But moving forward today, guys, yesterday the Boston Celtics would again wrap up their summer league with a loss <laughs> to the Brooklyn Nets at that 102 to 95. Now quickly, 
as you see right off the bat, Kessler Edwards, Cam Thomas. I mean, Cam Thomas with 25 points. I mean, so them boys had some, like, not only legit, you know, they had some, not only did they have NBA players like Cam Thomas. I mean, you've heard that name many times. He's the real deal. But um, that first half especially was very competitive. As you look again, Mafidu Cabangeli, who we'll get to in a minute, 18 points, four rebounds, four blocks. But then again, Johan Begaron, 25 points. He was nine for 17 from the field, three for six from the three with seven rebounds, three assists, three steals. And then our boy J.D. Davison, another double-double this time, 17 points, 10 assists. You also had Justin Jackson with 10 points. But um, again, looking at the actual, here's the updated stats for the whole, the entirety, as you see, five games played right here. I talked about Matt Ryan yesterday, two games, 19 points a game, shooting 52 and a half percent. But now Johan Begarone, he went all the way. He went up from 16 and a half to now where he finished averaging 18 points, five and a half rebounds, two and a half assists, and just under two steals. And then Mafidu Cavangeli, another popular name, he finished with 15 points, a little over eight rebounds, excuse me. And then you had J.D. Davison, who would finish with 13 points a game and eight plus assist excuse me and just under five rebounds again sam hauser no changes he just played in the two games travion williams another popular name he would finish averaging right at about seven and a half points six and a half uh, rebounds and two assists but if you search the boston celtics right now you'll see johan begarom shows progress You'll see Donovan Mitchell trade rumors. You'll obviously click on this. You'll go into, you'll see the LeBron James, all that nonsense, right? But one of the big ones you will also see is, boom, Celtics signed Cabin Jelly. That is right, guys. The Boston Celtics have signed forward center Mafidu Cabin Jelly to a two-way contract. Now, Mafidu, 6'10", says, and we just went over all of his stats over the actual five games what was it right at 15 and eight look we already signed jd davison right and now mafidu cabin jelly those are our two two-way contracts guys and just to familiarize you which and i had to research two-way and everything that goes into it first off that does not count towards your 15 man roster that doesn't count towards salary cap they are eligible to play in, I believe, 50 games for you. Obviously, then they can go to, you know, Maine. That's you'll usually see like Sam Hauser last year bouncing between the two, and they can be elevated to a full contract at any time. And they have to have had, I believe, less than four years of NBA experience to qualify. And NBA experience means one game in a season. So, <clears throat> again... For them to be able to get Kevin Jelly, who I thought was the Celtics best player throughout this summer league you know and I, I know you could argue you know a few others but um playing in all five games and when you look at i mean i've got some of the stats going at the bottom here but i mean every game multiple double doubles i mean his offensive rebounding ability the pick and roll the defensive end some blocks it just he was a presence and a force on both sides and for them to be able to get him into one of the two ways because you'll remember when I went over my roster predictions and I gave my final, I said the obviously the five, Smart, the Jays, Rob, Al, Brogdon, Derek White, that's our seven, boom. And then you've got Gallo and Grant, eight, nine, <clears throat> Peyton Pritchard, 10. And then you know they signed Luke Cornett and Sam Hauser. So that's 11 and 12. So my thought was you've got JD at one of the two ways, <clears throat> right? And then they would end up signing cap and jelly signing matt ryan and then bringing in one additional center from you know the free agent tp however they wanted to do it but um now because cap and jelly is a two-way he doesn't even count so now they have two additional roster spots so they've got cornet and hauser in the 11 and 12 and if they go ahead and bring in a big you know sign a free agent that's only number 13. They still have two additional roster spots with Cabin Jelly and JD Davison being able, you know, two ways they can travel with the team. They can essentially, you know, they're on the team and 
are inactive. You know, they're, they can be on the bench with them. So getting that experience, that NBA experience, I think is going to be crucial, especially to like J.D. Davison, only 19 years old. That's going to be great for him because I thought the four big players for me, J.D. Davison, Kevin Jelly, they're two big ones. But then Matt Ryan and then Johan Begerom was another one that I just thought really did flash throughout this. Johan, people make a lot of, you know, noise about Davison's age. Begaron and him are two months apart. He essentially threw, if for the players that played five games, led the way with 18 points a game. I mean, flashed on the defensive end, is an excellent rebounder, is another athletic freak. You know what I mean? And then Matt Ryan, 19 points a game, shot 52% from three. My question, I guess, is what happens to you know, Yohan Begarom, because I was wanting him to play on the, the main G League team. I was actually thinking he might get one of the damn two-way contracts. But um, I wonder, did they send him back over to Paris? Or because I would like to have him and J.D. Davison close to home. I think both of those guys being the exact same age and just the fact that five, six years from now, they'll still only be 24, turning 25 with all that additional experience. I think both of those gentlemen have a real shot at you know, providing a meaningful role in the future, you know, for the Boston Celtics. Again, we know Sam Hauser played in the two games, um, struggled in game one, looked a lot better in game two. He's already got his roster spot secured. I've already talked about Matt Ryan. I think he'll secure the other one. We did see some good flashes from Justin Jackson, who actually was the third leading scorer, came in right before game two, played in four games, averaged 15 points a game. Um, you know, he could be another one with a potential shot now that we got two openings. You know, Broderick Thomas is another one played with us last year, 13 points a game. So it'll kind of be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if Brad wants to keep some, you know, something open, you know, keep an opening just, you know, to have some type of flexibility. But uh, again, guys, I think that it was a home run, you know, signing Cabin Jelly. I thought that he played brilliantly, you know, through these five games. And I'm excited so far. The TPE actually expires tomorrow on the 18th. So we'll have the answer to that question relatively soon. But uh, again, awesome summer league, three and two record. Saw a lot of flashes from some of our young guys, and I am excited to see what happens next. Congratulations to J.D. Davison and to Mafidu Cavangeli securing their roster spots on the two-way contract. Again, guys, thank you so much for your time. Jagster Riches, James Peters, have an excellent conclusion to your weekend. Take care, guys.